Hello, my name's Michael Keneally, and I'm speaking to you from near the Healing Centre and Airbnb I run with my partner Maggie Pashley. And specifically, I'm talking about the healing of our planets. So this applies in my astrology courses and also in astrology readings. Now, the point is, I can teach quite superb analysis of how each planet will perform in our life. And I'll mention that in a bit. And I use both Vedic and Western astrology. But the point is, what's so often needed is to build on the superb statement of astrology. It's necessary to get a clear picture of how all the complicated energies of that planet will actually manifest in our life. And of course, it's also so important to then heal if necessary, empower if necessary. So what I want to you know, just very briefly show you is how you know, we can build, first of all, a superb understanding of a planet's deepest, deepest nature, bringing the sort of deepest of secrets of Vedic astrology and combining them with the great insights of psychodynamic Western astrology and evolutionary Western astrology. So you can have a very complicated statement, but actually it's so good to have the possibility of this statement and then you can do something about it. So I've got a little sketch here, I don't know if you can see it, of the Vedic birth chart with its 12 houses. And here, Libra in my fourth house, so Cancer Ascendant, is Mercury. And so I'm trying to understand my Mercury. I might feel I have problems in my communication in my organization of sort of computer work and so forth. And so, um, okay, what we do is we look at the houses, the house that Mercury occupies and any planets there, and the houses that Mercury rules, Gemini and Virgo. So essentially we're melding the energy of three houses and we're bringing in any planets that aspect Mercury, either conjunct or other aspects. And so in my case, that builds to a very complicated Mercury because my Mercury is conjunct K2 and it's retrograde. And so it isn't your normal conceptual thought, your normal communication. The fact that Mercury is retrograde tells us immediately that I've got to pay very special attention to it. The fact that Mercury is conjunct K2 tells us immediately that the normal sort of thought processes are in some way revealed to be not what they might seem. In fact, in Vedic astrology, it's called the Janana Karika, the Enlightenment Indicator. Because of what it does, it means that we will be led from conceptual insight to conceptual insight to conceptual insight. But with the divine purpose of learning that no theoretical paradigm is right. That no set of concepts is right. And so we get the divine realization that all Mercury type conceptual frameworks are actually not real. They are fingers pointing at the moon, to borrow the phrase from Buddhism. And so it can be quite difficult to live with that, you know, with m embracing a concept and then it's inevitable meltdown. And the fact that Mercury's retrograde and conjunct K2 means that I might, you know, get into endless difficulties with organising. I can go to great attempts to sort of organise things and do accounts and so forth. But then I seem to sort of, oh my gosh, I've put this in the wrong section and I've lost that, all that sort of thing. So I have a special destiny with Mercury. Now I'm using words, but sometimes a planet's manifestation in our life is so complicated it can actually be good 
if you like visual things, if you like drawing, to draw the different facets. So to put it very simply, if you have any ability at sketching and like that sort of thing, you can draw Mercury in the 12th house, you know, which is the ability to think your way into vast interrelating meanings and connections far beyond the obvious. Or, of course, it can be lies. You know, it depends on how you handle the 12th house things. Mercury in the 3rd house, or just putting it very simply, can be obstacles to do with Mercury and indeed sibling issues. And Mercury in the 4th house, conjunct K2, conjunct Sun, clearly indicates that parenting is a, is a very big problem and it's very difficult to work out what's real. And to build on that, you, see, you could actually draw those three bits and put them together so that when Mercury issues are sort of coming, you can draw back. Oh, no, I don't want to use my conceptualization, my communication that way again. You can see the sketch of the, you know, the Michael who handles Mercury this way, the Michael who handles Mercury that way that may not be helpful. And indeed, if it's something you just can't heal, well, then you need to develop a strategy, you know, find someone who will do bookkeeping or SEO or whatever it is for you. And maybe reciprocate services in return that bring out your special skills. So, you know, we've talked about like a very sophisticated way of working out Mercury. We bring in psychodynamic Western astrology. We bring in other techniques from Vedic astrology that I haven't even mentioned, like Argala, for example. And when you have a reading from me, or when you do one of my astrology courses, I'm ever so caring and supportive. And so we work through understanding of our Mercuries, your Mercury and my Mercury. Every course I do is in relation to your chart and my chart to keep the thing genuine, authentic and grounded. But sometimes we need to go beyond perception and indeed that very graphic method I tried to describe to you of you know, the visual description of the facets of, our, of a planet, to healing. Now, there are different forms of healing which you can consider. Now, one of them is called EFT, or Emotional Freedom Technique, and it's very simple, and I thoroughly recommend it if you feel it's right for you. Now, my partner, Maggie Pashley, does this work worldwide, and there's a separate uh, video, which I'll give you the link to in the write-up beneath this video screen and in the associated blog. But basically what you do, you tap on, the, on points, on the energy meridians of the body. First of all, to authentically put you in contact with the distress that the difficulties of a planet causes you in your life. The meant distress, the distress your soul chose so that you would learn to progress in this life in, in these particular ways, with these karmas, these scripts. To accept that distress, but then to sort of open a way through the block so that we are freed up for healing. So that's one method which I'd like you to look into. And as I said, all my astrology courses and all my astrology readings are linked to healing techniques. Well, just to mention another healing technique, I do shamanic journeying. And I've recently had great success with someone who Saturn is transiting across their sun at the moment. That's a big, big transit especially as Saturn is going through the Gandanta zone, the difficult transition from water to fire at the moment, and twice more in 2017. Now, basically, if we're on course in our life, Saturn to Sun can bring us golden reaping and success. And if we're on course, it can bring illness, pessimism, and professional downfall. And so, basically, 
The second method I've I'd like to mention that I can do with you is shamanic journeying. You know, guided by tarot, journey to meet your heart song success. That you, your essence. And so use the Saturn transit to perfect yourself, to strip away what shouldn't be part of your life, whether it's situations, relationships or attitudes, and to embrace heart song and golden reaping so i hope you've given i've given you a few ideas of the way in which astrology can bring superb statements which can be presented visually and can be linked to healing so have a look at my courses or enroll for a reading thank you